Welcome to Absolute Comics. My name is Benny, that is Sal, and that is Gem Mint, our illustrious guest for today's discussion. Have you ever What's been called going on, illustrious? Benny? <laughs> this is my first time being called illustrious, but I kind of like it. Hopefully we'll get some more of that. But yeah, thanks for having me on. What's going on, Benny? What's going on, Sal? Glad to be here. Glad to have you here. You've been so much fun to chat with. Uh, why don't you, for a few moments, just tell the chat who you are, because you'll be telling YouTube and the chat when we put this out. Yeah, so I'm Jem from Gem Mint Collectibles. Uh, <laughs> that's not my real name, and that's like a whole behind-the-scenes story. But yeah, people call me Gem Mint, so I have a channel. I do mostly statue unboxings. I'm a big fan of omnibus and collected editions, as you can see behind me. So I do big haul videos. I used to read them a lot and do reviews, but got, kind of fell back on that. And I do weekly comic book day reviews. I mean, this is the stack from this week. I mean, geez. So check me out. Uh, for now, it's still daily content, but you know, we kind of were talking about that as well. But yeah, man. Uh, and then you, I also you do have off to the break that stuff, mentality. But. It's like you got to break uh, the mentality. It's, it's hard to break, man. It's like a ba it's like a habit. Like, man, yeah. it, how do you not put something out? But anyway, it, it's worse than like a smoking habit because you're like, I, I got to do it. I got to do it. It's like that, yeah. right? It's really <laughs> I got to break the habit, man. I need a support group. You don't have That's to put right. out a video every single day. I, okay, so the next time you have an issue where you're like, I gotta put a video out, I have to film something, just call me up. I'll talk. You I need through a sponsor, it. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Benny. Look, I'm feeling like really stressed. Like it's nine o'clock. I usually Jittery. have a video out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for those who are here for the first time, this is the show that Sal and I get together every week to discussing some comic books you read and what's going on in the industry. Jem obviously read far more than we did this week. <laughs> I read a lot. Yeah. He came super prepared. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yes, every week this show goes live right here at Twitch at 5 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash comicstorian, and then it gets uploaded to Absolute Comics, the YouTube channel, which used to be the weekly poll. But anyway, today's topics are going to be, if I can find the discussion here on the thing, Shang-Chi being the highest rated comic book movie on Rotten Tomatoes. We're As then going to talk be. about, what's that? As it should be. Yes. Oh, it was <laughs> incredible. It was uh, Sal has not seen it, so don't worry. We will not oh, be doing okay. big spoilers. <laughs> I have can't. not. Yeah, COVID's in the way. Can't get a theater where. where I, and then the, the the forty five day wait on Disney Plus or something, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a tough. That's gonna be a tough month and a half, man. <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't even get a seat. We were looking it up, and I was trying to find some seat reservations, and every theater was sold out. So what, you're in the weekend. Northeast. What are you? New I'm York, in the Northeast. Or? Yeah, we're in the New York, New Jersey metro area. So it was so like, I, it was impossible. And, and every weekend. Funny? This, this is how funny the differences are. I'm in El Paso, Texas. Like nobody's heard of El Paso, Texas. We're like all the way the the western tip, and a I friend of mine rented salsa. out. What is that? <laughs> it's an El Paso salsa. <laughs> oh yeah, pace pace salsas from El Paso. You remember, remember those commercials? New York City. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, my friend rented out the theater. It was like 250 bucks. It's you get the whole theater. We had like 15 or 20 friends there, and yep. uh, we saw it opening night. It was awesome. Nice. That was my plan, but I was going to do it the day of, and it was like, no, it has to be the next day. And I'm like, no one's uh. available the next day. So it was like, I, it would be romantic for my wife and I to go rent an entire theater and watch Shang-Chi for $250, but like, I think she'd just get mad at me as opposed to being <laughs> like, wow, what a gesture. She'd be like, you have to see this movie for work, and you spent <laughs> our money to go see a movie by ourselves. What's wrong with and you? And $250 at that. Just read the spoilers. And I'm like, yeah. Hey, fair enough. I'm debating doing something similar for Venom because I had the similar problem here where the last time we saw a movie here, there was nobody in it. We saw Free Guy, there's no one. So I was like, oh, it'll be empty again. <laughs> but there's no outbreaks or any problems in Colorado. So everyone decided to go to the theater. So I booked the worst theater in the area with the old rickety <laughs> seats and the nice. sticky floor because no one booked it. Right. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'll just go there with me and my buddies. Maybe one or two people will show up. When we got there, it was packed. Yeah. Mm. I'm like, oh, yeah, because no one could get any other tickets because those all sold out. So we uh -huh. all ended up here. Yeah. So I'm thinking about next time just grabbing like a whole chunk of the theater and just be like, mine. I'll yeah. write it off. Business expense. Dude, <laughs> Spider-Man is going to be a business expense. Spider-Man's yeah. like, no, no. Yeah. If, if my wife doesn't want to go, it's just going to be me in the theater just like, <laughs> like it's, you're looking at your left. Hey, hey, hey! Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> no, I'll just I'll just be as loud as I normally am in a theater. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, that's what was weird because after the movie, we're turning around and we're talking to each other, which that doesn't happen in a regular theater because everyone's strangers, right? So yeah, we're just trying like, to get the fuck out. Like, yeah. <laughs> But we were uh, waiting right. for the post credit scenes, and that, that took a long time. But anyway. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, the rest of the topics, we'll be going back to Shang-Chi in a minute. So we're also going to yeah. talk about Marvel Comics' eight new tentpole titles. 
Yes. We're going to talk about Mark Ruffalo tweets out a spoiler for What If, and it was the clip revealing the episode of Marvel Zombies. Yep. Uh, first look at the Aquaman suit for Aquaman 2. Inferno will not be Jonathan Hickman's last event. Instead, he's doing a digital-only thing. Yep. Hmm. Um, and Warner Brothers released the first footage of Matrix Resurrections, as well as bringing back the website for the film franchise. Finally. But with a twist, we'll talk about it in a minute. Yeah, All right, so cool. as usual with the show, what did everyone read? Uh, obviously, Dark Ages came out. Uh, that was last oh. week, but awesome. still, just just we didn't get a chance to talk about Dark Ages, so it was dope. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Taylor's deceased, but for Marvel, I thought Bingo. it was amazing. I loved it. I, 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 not only did I like the big epic monster thing that they had to go up against, yeah. the fact that like what they didn't want to happen happened, and and yeah. that's like moving forward the whole premise. I was yeah. like, whoa! That, it, it was like a mind blowing big event battle, man. Yeah, yeah. Iban Coelho's work is awesome. Remind. It's actually funny how. I think Stegman did a bunch of promo images for this event, and I was like, and I just incepted myself. and was like, is Stegman drawing this event or this this Elseworlds esque what if book? And, and it was uh, a while back, right? Wasn't this, was it, this heavily delayed or something? This was heavily yeah. delayed, yeah. but yeah, uh, okay. but Coelho's work is very evocative of the Stegman style. It's just really cool, big epic splash it pages. Big. It's a really really dope looking book, as well mm -hmm. as it being Taylor. So it's like heart, humanity, uh, high flying action, stakes, death. Yeah, awesome. The biggest question that I had coming out of that, because like the whole first issue just sets up the universe, right? Right, That's and all it takes it the whole issue to do it, which is totally worth it, though. Yeah, and it it's starts like, it's with like a, a climax. It's like this was almost like the end of a lot of series, yeah. but it starts yeah. with that, and now we're in the dark ages. Exactly. Right. Right. But the big thing that I didn't even think about was Ant Man's device. I really want. I really hope we revisit the fact he couldn't shrink. Yeah. Like, is he just right? a He's giant stuck like that. <laughs> huge. That's sad. That's really But isn't cool. there other ways for him to activate the pin particles? Can he just, like, inject the serum or something? Yeah, but yeah. I you guess. can take it as a pill. They used to be right? pill poppers back in the day. So Maybe yeah, they're not could... now. I don't know. But I really – that like, that was the big thing for me that was like, oh, I wonder what they did to fix that. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of like when you go digital and you sell all your comics and then we go into the dark ages. Now you can't read the comics anymore. That's you, gone. You yeah. went to the new technology. Now you can't go back. <laughs> Are you are you are you mocking me in my digital collection? Is that <laughs> well, don't you also have the thirty thousand single yeah, issues? Or I do. I don't need the omnibuses. I have the originals. <laughs> Unless we go into the dark ages, then what are you going to do? You'll yeah. be over here looking through the omnis. That's right. <laughs> what would, anyway, all the lights go out and you just see me knocking on your door. I figured out where you live. Can I look at the library? <laughs> you said it was El Paso, Texas. So here yeah. we go. It's not that big of a city. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually caught up an event that I didn't know was an event yeah. instead of reading anything new. Infinite De Infinite Destinies. Have you guys read that? No. No, I haven't okay. heard that. Is that okay. is that the Marvel event that's being told over annuals? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. It's the I Return the of the one. Infinity Stones. They left. It is right. Yeah, I was trying. I only I only read the Thor. I think it was Thor Annual that was that was the uh, one of the stories. But I thought it was like the start of it. But it had already been going on. So I just I'm lost. There. Yeah, it, it started in June. Yeah, yeah. it's it, they've been running an event that no one knows exists. <laughs> Secret event. Well, that's part of the course right now at Marvel because they also have that like that last annihilation happening that nobody's reading, yeah. and I'm like, yep. what? It's the same kind of vibe. But what 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 was going on with the stones? Somebody was yeah. collecting. Or, oh, somebody had three of them or something like that. Or it's, black it, widow. They're, they're in the bodies of people. They moved into people, oh, and so they're okay. trying to figure it out. Yeah. And it's awesome because it kicks off with Iron Man going to Miles and stopping the assessor. And then you find out one of the Assessor's goons, uh, for those who aren't reading, the Assessor did a whole bunch of torture to Miles Morales ah. to clone him. Hmm. And he told Tony Stark, and Tony got mad and went to go beat the crap out of him okay. to discover that it, one of his goons had a stone. So the way it's doing the event is all the superheroes are running into the stone users. Yeah. And then they're all being called off, like going in other directions. But like I'm reading through this whole thing like – why have I never heard of this? Like, why is this? Why is this being told this way? Well, I remember the Thor, the Thor issue had like a sliver of the main storyline, and then it was just this whole unique Thor story. Yeah. So yeah. I've heard that they're a little bit slow in that sense, I guess. Right. As far as an event goes. 
I mean, this is very much like this is a classic thing that Marvel and DC, for that matter, Just used to do, that. where they were yeah. like, let's 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 shoot one event, attacks. Atlantis attacks, right. uh, uh, Armageddon, <laughs> whatever the hell, uh, Bloodlines. Some kind of X Men story was going through annuals with new mutants and stuff. As yes, well. absolutely. So Inhumanity was another one they did. Remember Inhumanity? When I they tried do. I didn't know that's how that was released. I didn't know yeah. it, was in, it was it was annuals, but I do remember that event. Well, At it wasn't was technically annuals, but it was an event that wasn't about the Inhumans. Oh, well, that sure. spread multiple books and had an Inhuman human in it That's like right. that yeah, was the whole right. theme with that <laughs> awesome yeah <laughs> i yeah. remember spider-man fighting the flame guy and it's like who was the flame oh he's an inhuman oh what's inhumanity like... right oh it's a whole thing wow look at you go <laughs> That's yeah. weird. so Getting i just I, well, how the is fact it? that neither of you have even heard of infinite destinies no, no tells i heard me of that it, i was it, not dude. the odd person out on this <laughs> good is it dope no <laughs> <laughs> So my thing is, I only heard it on accident because I'm loving Thor. I think Thor by Donny Cates is my favorite superhero book right yeah, now. So I fair. picked up this Thor annual. I saw that he didn't write it, but I was like, oh, maybe it'll still tie in. Totally didn't. But uh, <laughs> yeah. the Thor, Thor is something that I'm reading that I'm absolutely loving. I like how uh, Donny Cates is planting these little seeds, like that whole thing with Thanos with the with uh, Mjolnir with the mm, stones. In, yes. Speaking oh. of stones, in, and then we now we finally double back to that. Uh, but what's what I'm loving right now, man? This bad boy, nice house on the lake, DC yes. Black Label, tiny. I've heard fourth. that's good. I've read that one yet. So this this reminds me. Of, well, that reminds me. It makes me feel like this is what his sub stack's gonna be like. This has no superheroes, nobody you know, but it's like an amazing story with characters that I don't know. They're just so well written. Uh, the, the the premise is amazing. Like the antagonist, I guess you want to know what the hell this guy is and how is he able to do the things that he's doing. So. That's like one of my favorite. Uh, I, I want to call it an indie title every time, but it's yeah. DC. But it yeah. feels like an image book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I actually admit, keep me. I'm gonna buy that right now because I keep meaning to buy it. No, and then it's I keep worth getting it. it exists. Mm-hmm. And the, it's, it, I do want to end that, with one thing on Infinite Destinies because the chat is yeah, talking yeah. about it real quick. I just want to say, if you sure. want to know the order to make it even more confusing, it doesn't <laughs> officially tell you. What it does is in the corner it says. <laughs> Uh, Nick Fury Infinite Destiny Stories, part one of eight in the backup. Oh, That's how God. you track the order. <laughs> All right, real quick, since I already I showed it. If yeah. you guys like big, stupid Marvel symbiote stuff, Extreme Carnage is an eight-issue uh, uh, eight series. It's on issue six. six. Uh, no, si- this is issue six out of eight, actually. Oh, wow. I- I've been loving it. I have been digging this more than Absolute Carnage, and I'm a huge Donny Cates fan, huge Maximum Carnage fan. Extreme Carnage has been super fun like shining light on the life uh, foundation symbiotes a lot of big changes for the scream symbiote i don't want to spoil for you guys cool toxin as you can see with this one and spider-man has been kind of sucking lately so having this extreme carnage has been yeah. refreshing to be in that world totally. i i'm actually really loving extreme carnage because not only did it bring back one of my favorite superheroes uh flash thompson but mm-hmm. i love the idea that it's focusing each issue on a symbiote Right. Like, it's not just, oh, look, Lasher's in the background. It's kind of like, where the hell did all of these 90s symbiotes go? Yeah. Which <laughs> one was the green one that was in the old folks' Phage. home? Was that, that was Phage. crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. No, crazy. I'm loving Extreme Carnage. I agree with you on yeah. that one, too. Speaking of Spider-Man, I realized the way it's being written catching up on Sinister War. Yeah. I realized Nick Spencer is writing a TV show. Like, he has the running plot that has now uh, gone on for 70 mm. issues. Yes. But every two to three issues is another Spider-Man on an adventure that may or may not relate to what is happening. Right. Usually not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. that's the biggest problem. Like, I just did the part with Claire. I just caught through the point of Clairvoyant. Okay. So, he, he, like, they're in the casino. They're doing yeah. all of that stuff. And I'm like, in the background, Kindred is still walking around. Oh, my God. I'm like, yeah. okay. Why aren't... Can we just end one of these? We can go to the next one. Like <laughs> He's like, no. No, we can't. <laughs> Let me tell you something real quick. Since you're talking about Spider-Man, I got it in here somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, somewhere. The stack so of books. Yeah. This book, man, I'm retcons. Retconning yes. things that people hated about Amazing Spider-Man. And it seems like uh, they're going to retcon a second thing, which yeah. might be tying into the movie uh, No Way Home as well. So I kind of liked it. I kind of liked Okay, I'm going to go out with a bang. I'm going to fix... It's kind of like when a president leaves and pardons a bunch of people. Like, <laughs> Nick Spencer is pardoning travesties in Spider-Man's history. So, yeah. Okay, okay. Been, yeah. I, I just <laughs> need to know one thing. And you don't have to spoil yeah. it enough. I just need to know. Do they fix Harry? That's all I no. need to know. No? no. Damn it! It's still a demon! <laughs> Sal, you read it? 
Now, I, have, I have seen preview pages for the upcoming issue that comes okay, out tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what's going on. I'm thrilled with the change that they've made to another story that people don't like that was that had Straczynski's name on it. But yeah, that's the one I'm talking. So that yeah, in this issue, okay, retcon- sweeping yeah, okay. changes. I'll I'll, yes. I'll fully catch up so that tomorrow Harry, when that drops, but, I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. I mean, it's tapped into my childhood. It's tapped into Spectacular Spider-Man 200. Yes. It's tapped into Amazing Spider-Man. Was it 400 or 401? So yeah. I, I haven't been liking the Spencer run or Sinister War, but this issue, I actually dug it. It was good. That's great. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because Spencer's been doing a lot of house cleaning, and that's kind of the problem because the <laughs> things he's been doing, I haven't had any issue with. He, him getting Mary Jane and Peter back together, him doing cleanups for one more day since past, like all this right. stuff, that's awesome, but it's all just been cleaning out the garage. You're not actually doing any storytelling, you know? Right. The Sin Eater arc was dope, man. That was pretty cool. I, <laughs> I will admit. Good, right? And that was very much like, it's intrinsically connected to the, to the kindred stuff while also yeah. being its own thing. But everything yeah. else that he's done has pretty much been like kindred's like, woohoo. And then there's this boomerang <laughs> plot and you're like, is there, I, okay, I, I liked the, the boomerang, boomerang plot. No, I liked I, it. <laughs> I, I, why? I yeah. <laughs> what was, what was fun? <laughs> it was it, it kind of created a Spider-Man buddy cop kind of thing when the two yeah, of them would work was. together, and yeah, I but, like, like that. To what end? But I, I okay. The my biggest problem with Nick Spencer's run as a guy who just finished reading Chameleon Conspiracy Giant Size. Yeah. So I'm about to go into Sinister War in the finale, right? Because uh-huh. I'm playing catch up on a lot of things. A lot Listen, of, you'll like, read Sinister War in two point five. It'll, <laughs> it'll seconds. take a few <laughs> seconds to read. Yeah, if you read just the bulk, just the event, Sinister War one yeah. through four, it takes about four minutes to read. Yeah, hold. Okay, cool. Cover, so I'll cover. read that first and then go right into the ending. But yeah. as somebody who's gone through it, my biggest issue with Nick Spencer's run is he dragged most of it on for too long. Yes. Right. Like, yeah. I can't think of any storyline that, like, the, the Craven thing took too long. The Kindred thing took too oh. long. The Craven Sin thing I kind of dug, but co- people well, like the Craven. That was some, one of the selling points because that was, like, one of the first arcs, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I jumped in and out of this. When I started hating it, I dropped it. Then Same. something would pique my interest. I would jump back in. Yep. But, but it, it, Craven could have been better if it was condensed down. Same thing with 2099. It turned into a 2099 event. Yeah. And it sucked, just needed yeah. to be a fun little, hey, Miguel's back. What the hell's yeah, well, going on? By 2099, I was like, I didn't. Uh, you mentioned it. I forgot it even happened. So I, yeah. I missed <laughs> it. Me too. Like Craven's thing, it didn't go on long for me. I didn't read any tie ins. I just read the. I just read Amazing <laughs> Spider Man. I'm like, the Craven thing was cool. It's it, only like it, six well, issues. I, and I think what makes his event, his run worse than it needs to be, is the way Marvel wants to handle things. Yeah. Like, okay, Last Remains was in the point issues. So you the had to read double crazy, Spider-Man. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I, I, and then, I dipped out for that. Well, then they also end, like, Chameleon Conspiracy in a giant size. Oh, that's... You could tell and it's bu- just because Boomerang they're trying to... was in a giant size. Yeah. It was like, why is it not just one through a hundred? Just those, let them have a hundred. Those giant sizes are twofold. Number one, they wanted to hit milestones. They were hitting numerical milestones for Spider-Man's, like issue numbers so they can mm-hmm. yeah. reach a number and then the legacy the ones right the legacy yeah. numbers number two uh you can co- you can charge more and that's legitimately yeah. the only reason why they did was, those things that was my biggest complaint though because like last remain should have just been a nice 10 issue arc totally it's like it, it was it was weirdly broken up and it, i feel like part yeah. of this is why nick spencer wanted to go to substack because after what they did to his secret empire which i don't know for certain jim but we got to talk to him once at a con and I brought up why was your MacGuffin in a side issue, and the roll in his eyes and the face just defeated. He was yeah. like, it was publishing stuff. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. You his could, choice. You- <laughs> no. So it sounds like a lot of these moves sound like they could not be his choices, right? right. There's no way any writer wants to tell the story that they want right, to tell right, the right. way Marvel has been doing his Spider-Man run. But you're yeah. right. He had 100 issues with point issues and, and <laughs> uh, side events, yeah. one through four issues. So it's, it could have been one through 100. But, yeah, maybe like, like that, well, it's legacy numbering and other things. Yeah, Marvel just was mucking with it too much. Yeah, it was – I don't sucks. know. I didn't mind it overall, but I it did get me to a point where I realized I can get the omnibuses of all the way from Straczynski's Jus- run all the way till now. And I'm like – I'm just going to reread the last 20 years of Spider-Man. Screw it. <laughs> well, uh, they don't have Dan Slott's run collected yet. There's a lot that they're still missing. They're actually but, really catching but up from one to... they're all individuals on Comixology. Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> plug. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, oh, it also has... Spots in us. <laughs> it's also got to suck for Nick Spencer because I think, like, people overwhelmingly dislike this run. And, yeah. And, and campaign for another team to jump on. I'm digging the solicits for uh, 75 and 76. I'm like, all right, let's go. New yeah. team. I like the, the, the throwback Ben Riley suit. Ben Riley with Peter yeah. Parker. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. 
By the way, uh, that that's another thing I think sucked about Spencer's run. His new suit that lasted like four issues, and they made a big deal about it. I I oh, think that yeah. was all Marvel. I don't think that was, had anything to do with him. What was, suit was that again? Was that, that, was like that streaming kind of suit? It was like yeah. it was he blue would stream and what he's silver. doing. Yeah. Oh, and that's what they're doing in Booster in uh, Blue and Gold right now, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. Did it come out? I missed it. Oh. Issue two comes out this week. Yeah. All right, I'll pick it up now. It's been delayed. The, uh, yeah. Well, it's funny with the because Dan Slott run. Everybody gives so much hate to Dan Slott. I Yo, think his Dan, run was fine. I loved his Spider Man run. I yeah. mean, I think that's what why he's Dan Slott and he's able to do all the things. The things he's able to do is because of what he did with uh, Spider Man and the whole Otto Octavius thing. Yeah. I loved it. I I, yeah. I would love to see an omnibus for that. I think you'd have to do a couple or two or three maybe. Well, that's, I mean, technically his time started with Big Time all the way. That's what I'm to saying. Yes. Parker Industries. Death of Johnny, yeah. and then you had um, the Ends of the Earth. There was a lot of arcs that he did, right? Oh yeah, Spider yeah. Island. The, Spider he, Island. Yeah. Spider Island was. I think he has and then like that brought back, uh That brought back Kane. Then you had the Scar the Spider run. That's when yeah. I got back into reading comics after a long hiatus from a teenager to a young yeah. adult. But yep. <laughs> yeah, Big Time I to liked Spider it. Island is some terrific Spider-Man work, and. I loved, like you said, just t- dovetailing from Spider Round into Kane and giving Chris Yost's Scarlet Spider a run. Yeah, I, I actually was just run. rereading that run. I'm like, this is such a good book. It's too bad it got it was great. But like, God. Yeah. yeah. And I know a lot of people and, give yeah. crap to Parker Industries, but I like the fact that that was the eventual progression. Like, if yeah. you read Dan Slott, Spider Man proves he's smart, capable, and goes in that direction, which is what I really liked about yeah. it. Yeah. Parker Industries mm-hmm. would have been a really good direction if it had had enough time and if there had been enough, like, I, I just there wasn't enough there for it to have been yeah, what it what it could have been. It. It's just too bad. Yeah. It's just it's just a I, shame I really, as opposed to an era that we Nobody liked. wants to see him as like Tony Stark though. No, right. Everyone that wants was to the see issue. broke Peter Parker, that, that damn Parker luck, you know, yeah. and, and just too many things were going right for him at that time. Agreed. <laughs> that's yeah, that that's definitely a problem. <laughs> so all right, well let's move on back to back to our Shang Chi yes. discussion. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Uh, so Sal hasn't seen it. We're not going to go into any spoilers, so don't worry about that okay. chat. Uh, it got a 98% rating. The highest comic book movie on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. And if, for those who don't know, it had a record-breaking Labor Day opening weekend. Now, I do think Good. they for cheated. COVID. Te- well, yeah, for COVID. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure. So better than last year. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> record-breaking in, tw- in one year. It's been the best of the year. <laughs> no, but, that's but listen true. they deserve it man they balance so many things so many different aspects to this movie it wasn't just a superhero origin movie they had yeah. mythologies that they delved into with uh not only his father's clan his mother's heritage that's you cool. had the little nods to the mcu i almost feel like if this wasn't an mcu movie people would be ranting and raving about this even more so if it was just yeah. like this dope kung food type of flick or whatever that's dope but uh yeah, it has so many, and then the end. I'm not gonna. I, I don't want to spoil for Sal. That's or fair. I, <laughs> I got the gonna, end. Was it? Sal it already like has your challenge of not watching it for 45 days. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will try and see it within the 45 days. <laughs> they I, I, don't I, end it in a typical Marvel fashion. No. That is what I want to okay, say. Okay, all right. Yeah. So no, the I, formula, like, it's like uh, Benny, how we talked about during the M, uh, the Disney Plus shows. But the formula stuff. So I feel like they strayed away from the formula in this movie, which they've been doing a great job, uh, like in Loki as well. So yeah. uh, I mean, I like I, to see everything it. in Loki was great, except it wasn't Kang. I'm just throwing that no, out there. I'm just <laughs> I think we've established it wasn't <laughs> Kang. It's he who remains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the movie was good, man. Uh, yeah, well, the actors. I think it was great. Uh, I know someone gave me crap about it on Twitter, but I it, even the humor didn't feel out of place for me. Nice. Because that's the, the only thing I feel like it did. I think <laughs> I feel like his side character, some of it felt a little bit forced to me, but I accepted it. I was like, okay, overall, you know, it had it threw in a little right. MCU humor. Humor. Mm-hmm. You said you did. You okay? But they they were on Twitter, kind of saying what I'm saying. Then is what it sounds like. Yeah, no. Right. Twitter yeah. agreed with you that they felt the, yeah. the humor was a lot out of place. I think it might be because I'm aware of her comedy. Because she's talking a about comedian. Aquafina. <laughs> yeah, Aquafina. I can yeah. never say her name properly. She says it's not actually not pronounced that way, but that's what everyone says. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm aware of her comedy, so maybe that's why it felt like okay to me. Because mm-hmm. she, yeah. she was doing a lot of the fish out of water joke style, okay. which is very right. traditional to MCU. I, I liked her in Crazy Rich Asians, and yeah, uh, exactly. You know, if it's the same, yeah, she kind was of okay. Like it, it was kind of those things where like it's a little bit cheesy, but it kind of still works. And and and, and the character, I. Benny knows what I, what I want to say that I'm not going to say, but that's fair. She's I, there. So, I, the cool. only, without spoiling, <laughs> yes, it's impossible. I, I, it's impossible. All I'm going to say is, about 20 minutes in, she should have been like, "Bye, 
Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, but I, he was a good friend. The so the, the, sound, the, the, you know what I'm saying. So was, they showed the they showed the friendship. She was a good friend. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 Boo. <laughs> Sorry. Sal. All right. We'll move on to the next one before we just tell them the whole plot. <laughs> <laughs> Sal, did you know Shang Chi is in this movie and it's not pronounced Shang Chi? Uh, <laughs> yes, I've been informed. By the I didn't know it was. I did not know it was. Sh- uh, sh- how do you say it the right way? It's Shang. apparently Shang Chi. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah, I've been I, saying Shang since I was born Shang. because, like, Same that's here. because that's we can, look. It was created by a bunch of white guys, and like, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, that's what that's <laughs> but, how they pronounced it. But like, it, it if you if you spell it this way and it's in this culture, uh, you know, it's been pronounced this, and it's like, I'm look, I'll change. I'm down, but like, give me a minute, you know, give me give me a little time. <laughs> My brain has got to rewire. I got to rewire. But I think. They don't take that too seriously in the movie, which you right, see. No. Which, yeah. I, I did see, I think I saw like either a trailer or something like that where they there's a scene where they literally talk about the pronunciation. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure because they're like, listen. Everyone thinks it's Shang. For the like, first six, 60 years, it's been Shang. <laughs> well, We're going to walk in and tell everybody it's Shang, and they don't even know who this character is. So like, it's going to take right. some work. He's he's in hiding in the opening, like that's why he's like not. Yeah, he has a different name. Yeah, his name is Sean, and then he's like my na- real name is Shang Chi. So they make like fun that. of it that for like. <laughs> okay. Like, wait, so you went from Sean to Shang? Shang, <laughs> like. <laughs> well, uh, the original one is Shang, like the real one. Is. <laughs> but yeah, that's funny. So good. all right, moving on. Marvel has revealed eight new tentpole titles. Yes. Which I'm th- this combined with other announcements from Marvel. I'm excited because it feels like Marvel's like, all right, all right. We got Penguin Random House. We're back on track. COVID yeah. is as over as it's probably going to get. Let's do right. it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That sucks. It might just be like this moving forward. but Yeah, this yeah. is where we're at yeah. now. Just deal yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I like uh, seeing them announce it like MCU style. Like, yeah. boom, this is what we're going to do. This is the plan. I think we all want to yeah. know that there is a plan, right? So yes. that was kind of cool. That's right. Well, that, that's what I think as DC fans. I know you're a DC fan, lightly at least, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the issue I have with DC right now is I I feel like they're just throwing stuff against the wall. Yeah. Like, I love some of it. And some of it, I'm like, who <laughs> who published? Why? You know, Who said okay on that? See, here's <laughs> the thing. With, with DC, I can say, I think, I, I think I can say this. They do have a plan. But well, they've been promoting that they do. They literally have Jim Lee being like, hey, we got stuff coming, right, guys. But like, <laughs> that's not how you promote your plan. <laughs> like, you need to talk to marketing and sell your plan. You can't just have a plan and expect so. us to assume the plan. Their plan is Batman titles. <laughs> well, that that is see, now that's 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 not a plan if you've been doing it for forty years. That's just he's not wrong into though. Even comfortable even chair. Batman Urban Legends, which is not actually about Batman, right? It's about everybody. He's called Batman. <laughs> of course it is. I mean, like, look, they, there was a book I can't remember. They, well, there was a book called Gotham Central, which could have benefited from co- being called Batman Gotham Central, would have sold a little bit more copies. I love yeah. that book, but yeah. put Batman yeah. in the title. Just put Batman in the title. That's all I have to, it's a brilliant it's a brilliant strategy. It's worked pretty well so far. Yeah. yeah. Look, it's like it's like Benny said, you train your customers, right? You train your that's audience and that's what they've done. And like if we only buy number ones in Batman, so that's what they're gonna just keep on doing. That's wow. really the thing. You gotta shake the you gotta shake the tree and see what falls out. You can't just say, Well, they only buy Batman, so let's only sell Batman. If you <laughs> If you dial it back and you, you know, you got to figure it out, but you got to ease people into it. You can't just like, you can't do cold turkey and you can't do it too slow. And with this initiative, with this infinite frontier, they really needed to sell this better. And it just, it just My- needed to be branding, marketing, and overexposure. They really needed to, to, to sell you on it instead of just being like, okay, so like the DC universe is kind of confusing and in tatters, but like Batman's right. doing fine. So like Batman though, like that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with Infinite Frontier for me, like I've read all the crisis events. I've read the Omnis, uh, but I still felt like this Infinite Frontier, you had to be expert level DC knowledge to really enjoy it fully. You can't yeah. come into this thing as a, a novice reader. No. E- even I'm, I'm probably a level above novice, and I still was like, all right, what is Psycho Pirate again? And what uh, Infinite Captain Frontier. Terror? Infinite Frontier needed like you know what Infinite Frontier really needed? And it, this is yeah, just like an encyclopedia <laughs> in the back. See, I was gonna say a handbook, but like you know what they yeah. really should have done? Coordinated with Comic Story and and made it kind of like this is what happens. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, here's the characters, mm. here's what's happening, here's the story that they're referring to. Like some kind of dual release that's kind of like 
you read in the book and you're like, okay, I don't know who the hell these people are, or right. but I'm enjoying what's going on, but I need to know this person, this right. person, and like do some kind of dual publishing initiative to kind of just sell the characters because no one is against what's happening in Infinite Frontier. Right. It's just that they're no. like, but I don't get who two thirds of the cast are because most of us didn't read Multiversity. Oh, I mean, yeah. even Roy, they turned into a Black Lantern right, because like, they haven't made a thing in so 15 years. But not years. even, he, he's not right. even a Black Lantern. He's something else. He's another type right. of Black Lantern. So it's Omega like, Omega Lantern or something. Right. Like, yeah. what does that even mean? Which and is a callback to a Tom King run. Yes. Who did Kyle Rayner in the Omega Core or whatever. Yeah, like, that's Mega right. Men, yeah. Like this 10 was, years ago. Yeah. This was Joshua Williamson nerding out with DC. <laughs> right. <fandom>. Which, <laughs> which, like, that's what DC is, right? People always yeah. talk about, it, like, oh, DC, I love it. You, they reboot the universe every five minutes. I'm like, yeah, sure. Except for every crisis. Except that the fact right. that like you need a handbook for every, you know, Marvel used to publish a handbook. DC published a handbook. You know, DC's handbooks were like ten times thicker because there was just so much <laughs> more, so much more lore, so many more characters, so much more nonsense to get through. And it's just like they needed, you know, I I, I appreciate it. I loved it, and because it, it was like Infinite Frontier was one of those books. It's like this is fun. This is cool. And it's like yeah. it's not apologizing for being so deep and rich, and right. full of like its own universe, but like. You you gotta help people along. Why did New Fifty Two yeah, like, sell so well? Because they told you you could start at the ground floor. Right. Infinite Frontier is like if you know, you know, and you'll love it. And what's funny is I think yeah. they had an issue zero. Yeah, they did. Yeah. But it it wasn't. But they didn't really tie like, it into the main is, book. That was no, the weird no. part. And it didn't. It just like, was it, setting up the story. Yeah. Yeah, and it didn't just. Infinite Frontier should have absolutely just been like Infinite Frontier, the handbook, and it's like just you turn the page, character. Paragraph of character. <laughs> like, why is there a rabbit with a cape on? Yeah, I mean, do not do not badmouth Captain Carrot. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, like, Carrot. if you if you like multiversity, like, really, if you read multiversity, you you yeah. get it. But I didn't read multiversity. Here's the thing: I messed up. I think most people didn't. And yeah, I, yeah. you know, we made a video very early on in my channel's career where we were when multiversity launched, and we were like, this book is impenetrable, and it's like really hard to sell because it's going to alienate a lot of new readers because it's like so deep and full of lore and it was our most downvoted video of all time wow like, we like there are still 4chan threads being made to this day where people are like cop pop's a bunch of horse shit because of this multiversity video <laughs> like this eight-year-old video where we said multiversity number one is not very new reader friendly like that's what we said but Multiversity is hailed mm -hmm. as this kind of like classic piece of like DC iconography and Grant Morrison. Ah, and yeah, it is a handbook. You need it to know what the hell's happening in front of frontier, but yeah. you also need to not take for granted the fact that everybody's read multiversity because they didn't. <laughs> um, I do want to, before we move back to Marvel, which was the topic we kicked off here. Yeah. I, one <laughs> comment we had on the, that we had from the comment over here that I liked was that Batman fear state has taken like, Eight months to kick off. Ugh. It is finally kicking off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, the alpha issue. What is with these alpha and omega issues? Like, I mean, I remember them back in Age of Apocalypse and whatnot, but like, nah. don't don't call it alpha. Just well, say they did issue it in, one. Didn't they, do, didn't they do it in Extreme uh, Carnage too? Yes, yeah. they did. Yeah. Oh, they're still doing them. I'm not saying that they're not, <laughs> that it's old hat. But what, I guess saying. what I'm trying to say is Extreme Carnage, I, I didn't really, I, it didn't bother me in Extreme okay. Carnage, but I don't for know, me, for Fear State. Yeah. If, yeah, if, right? and it feels like it double dips a little bit with, with this week's Batman issue as well. It's kind of yeah. like, did I read this already? I think they use the same panels and everything. Oh, oh did they do that? Oh, what that again? I don't know. Does they may have recreated me, Let me know, but I, they might have. But the whole Batman, like, I'm out of my mind panel. I'm like, didn't I see this? <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do that, though, and that's the problem. Yeah. I think it's like, you got to just, in clear, plain English, put on the cover what issue this is and what part this is and what yeah. this is just that's been my biggest me. complaint like everyone mm. likes to i love whatever i com make comments that marvel and dc have become impenetrable because they'll do batman here's five batmans okay, right what order do i read them in that doesn't matter it doesn't matter but, ma <laughs> but manga manga you start at issue right one. but manga you go one, one two three four yeah. and i say this multiple times on twitter and there's always at least one Oh, because the last time I made this rant was the Spider-Man thing. And I'm yeah. like, so it told me to go to Giant Size, and I do a Google, and I got four Giant Size, and there's always one guy, well, Benny, if you had read the cover, this one says Chameleon Conspiracy in little fonts, and this one says uh, Boomerang Bullshit in little fonts. Yeah. You should have known which one to get. And I'm like, no. Are you? no. And But the best part about that guy's debate was I told him, like, 
okay, that's fine. I can look at that, but not everyone's going to be. And he goes, right. well, your comic store will be telling you which one to buy. No, they blah, won't. Blah, blah. And he's like, <laughs> and I work at a comic store, so I make sure that I let everyone know the order to read. And I'm like, okay, cool. You do a great job. Uh, maybe, could you work at the other ones? Like, right. Here's your employee <laughs> of the month plaque. Yeah. Everybody else doesn't work that way. And like, no, no, that's not, that's My, not realistic. My LCS owner is asking me, hey, is this one worth the read? Like, he's, he's, getting, he's getting recommendations off me. Yeah. But yeah, man. yeah, no, they don't have time. They're, they're trying to run a business. <laughs> yeah. So sure. now that we've gone on about what's wrong with DC right now, uh, <laughs> Marvel Comics has a timeline, which looks great. Oh, yeah. What are well, we talking about least, again? In plain English, they're like, here's the events that are coming out. Yeah. And they ma yeah. here's what matters in Marvel right now. I mean, like, yes. And if you're if you're like, oh, actually, Daredevil matters. First of all, I'm one of them. I love Daredevil, and yes, Daredevil's getting an event, but like, I'm gonna miss that series. But there are other series out there that are like smaller or more niche or whatever. And listen, they know that you're not gonna be reading these big things, so you're you're good. Like Moon Knight, whatever, you're covered. Read Moon Knight, enjoy. But <laughs> these right. are the big things. Like this is where the D this is where the Marvel universe is heading. And can we can we just comment real quick that they're yeah. killing Wolverine again? No, are they? Well, they, they're doing like that. that the, the, the ten deaths, deaths of Wolverine. Wolverine. <laughs> the ten deaths of Wolverine. Ah, He's gonna die again. He can come back ten times. It doesn't matter. The resurrection protocols are in place. It's not like the death of Wolverine. We gotta, we gotta get rid of the resurrection protocols. <laughs> Nothing matters. Man. I love them. I, I think it's great. It's because so we, bad. How well, do you love those? The reason why I love them is because death never mattered in Marvel anyway. So That's now true. there's an At explanation. At least there's a reason. Yeah, now right. there's like, look. You know, the tension of the death in modern comics has been thwarted. There isn't any anymore. I mean, like, there is if, like, Mary Jane dies, because she doesn't have right. an in with Charles Xavier. But right. <laughs> everybody else, you know, Hawkeye dies. You're like, bullshit, get over it. See you in, see in two years, max. Didn't but, Black Widow come back immediately? Yeah, Black Widow came back herself? immediately as a clone, and they've barely scratched the surface of explaining exactly whether or not. Like, they, no one was worried that it would confuse or upset people if a clone of Black Widow came back and people go like, oh, but that's not the real Black Widow. No one complained. And when I say nobody, I don't mean you, commenter. I mean <laughs> the rest of us. <laughs> and so the resurrection protocol is just, just a plot armor thing that says, yeah, they're going to do all kinds of stuff. And you know what? Like, you don't have to argue about, like, the cold vacuum of space killing anybody or, you know, them fighting Magneto for the umpteenth time. Like, they're coming back. They come back. Whatever. And you know what? Like, um, the, now the issue is, like, will they come back sooner or later? Yeah. Right. Where are you in the queue? Or do you not come back if you're Scarlet Witch? If you guys are reading X-Force still, this uh, has a great B story that dabbles with the resurrection protocol and why it's not... Oh, I'll just get reborn. So right. there's some interesting stuff in there. And I like how someone in the chat said as well, Way of X is playing with the idea, is this ethical? Right. Like, what about your soul? Like, is is it? are we just flesh bag coming out of gold balls, eggs, or whatever? Yeah. But, uh, Two things yeah, I so want to comment on. That's worth talking about. Okay. with it. Yeah. No, go ahead, Jeb. No, no, I, I'm done. I just want to say, uh, Jeb is great to have on this show because I'm finding so many books that I fell behind on and I need to catch up on. <laughs> X-Force has a good issue. I wouldn't recommend the run as a whole. Mm -hmm. just I liked the there. run up until like 12 or 13, but when it went to Ten of Swords, I didn't jump back on after yeah. Ten of Swords. Uh, that, 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 that had that effect. Yeah, yeah. Same with That was the issue. With ten, ten, I read everything up to Ten of Swords, and afterwards I was like, all right, I'm back to reading X-Men, I guess. Yeah. Like, that's just X-Men main. The last two so, issues uh, of Wolverine had Andy Kubert art, so you got to read those because they look uh, great. Uh, uh, and speaking of Wolverine and the Ten Deaths and Ten Lives of Wolverine, I'm excited to see something that's just dedicated to Wolverine that isn't getting sidetracked or derailed by all these things going on in the yeah. overall mutant universe. Right. Wolverine prints money. What the hell? Like, how come he hasn't mattered in the last two he's, years? And it's because and he's got, like, okay. the weakest title right now. Yeah. I, I have the million-dollar comic idea that they're not doing. Spider-Man, Deadpool, Wolverine team-up book. Just an endless run. <laughs> yeah, it gets it gets too jokey though with that. Here's right? the like book. Spider-Man, right? Deadpool. Let me let me let me let me let me take the. No, that's why you have Wolverine, Jim. Wolverine will ground the joke. Stop with the jokes. Yeah, right. He's yeah, you, do. <laughs> you, you you round out the cast a little bit. You bring back New Avengers, and you put you keep Spider-Man, Wolverine, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and you put Deadpool on the team as like a sales mm -hmm. boost. You know, you got issue one. <laughs> is, issue yeah. one is going to sell. Issue two, going to be a 50% drop off. Issue three, put Deadpool in. Sales go back up. And now New Avengers is a, is a top selling title again. And you're going to get more people buying it because Aaron's run is, let's just say divisive. 
You know, it's funny. They're kind of doing that with Shang-Chi, right? Every yes. issue has a big Marvel player because book, we know too. you don't really know this character, but Spider-Man's in it and Wolverine's in it Captain and Captain America, America's in it. Yeah. And and Iron that's Man's the next. Shang-Chi versus book, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good book, by the way. It's, a it's great. I, I'm di- And it, it ties in with the movie yes. in, in, like, in the background of the character. So it all makes sense. Yeah, no, I'm just opening up tab after tab of recommendations from the two of you <laughs> right? right now. Because for me, the last six months, because I've been working on the new projects, I've gotten way behind on comics yeah and so i'm just like oh i gotta put catch up on that one i gotta catch up on that one i yeah. got because i'm really just yeah. catching up on the videos i'm putting out okay right. we're doing spider-man let me read spider-man <laughs> exactly we'll know what's going yeah. on here and, and that's why i'm not reading omnibus because i'm i'm reading an omnibus of new comics every week <laughs> and it's like by the time wednesday's here i don't want to read anything yeah. until i start getting my books later on uh, that weekend or whatever right yeah yeah Who oh yeah you know flashbill brings up a good point we could just have another ongoing Deadpool. Why is that canceled still? Uh, well, because believe. the Deadpool I, they had was I didn't like it. You liked it? Monster Island? I kind of dug it. I thought it was. cool. I did not like I, it. I liked uh, Kelly uh, uh, Kelly Thompson had. I think uh, it was Kelly Thompson. Okay, yeah. you know what? The run. Uh, how about this? How about the run before that? They canceled mid run where he was gonna try and go to hell and save his family. Right? Like weird. It's weird. Uh, wait, wait, what? Then they had the one where he married Death and everything. Yes. I mean, that I was a know. great one. Yeah. I didn't. Really, I, I haven't really ha- have had a Deadpool run that I like, so they need to do something. That's fair. That's fair. They, really, <laughs> the, the weird thing is they should just have multiple Deadpool runs the same way they have multiple Batman and Spider-Man runs. Yeah. Right. Because you could have the goofy Deadpool the Merc, who does Monster yeah. Island, and you could still have the Merc who's just badass and yeah, deadly. Yeah, because every time Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe, that book sells. And it's like it's not because he's killing the Marvel Universe. It's because of that interpretation of Deadpool. Yeah, it's just, he's it's, a serious, not jokey Deadpool. It's an alternate right. Deadpool because, yes, Deadpool is a meme lord, but like you could also have two <laughs> versions, and no one would complain. The meme people are like, yeah, he's pretending to be a badass over there. He's my hilarious jokester over here. And meanwhile, the other guy's like, no, that's like that's that's bullshit joke. Like, hey, Deadpool, this is my Deadpool. Like, <laughs> I mean, we got Deadpool three coming in the MCU. Let we need to get a title going. I think Marvel's doing a good job with this Kang Timeless uh, event that they have yes, in there. See, yep. see me going back to the main title, but uh, yeah, we want more Kang. We yeah. saw a variant of Kang and Loki, and we want to know more about Kang. They got the mini series out, which I dug the first issue. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, and now we got this uh, Kang the Conqueror event coming. Yeah, my, yep. my my wife pointed this out. Let me let me let me hit you with this, Jim. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the Kang series, right? So you're telling me that Kang the book is about an old alcoholic time lord who can do anything and go anywhere with a young like inexperienced odd jeez <laughs> type sidekick <laughs> I see where you're going <laughs> is, is, it, is it Rick or Morty or is it Back to the Future <laughs> I think it's Rick and Morty I think it's Ka- Kang is ne- is a Rick and Morty book just a quiet secret like I, in I, Marvel I, Universe Ka- Morty, Rick and, and I love Morty. how like he, he he's in young Kang's life now he's making all types of new mistakes that he probably wouldn't have even made had he not interfered exactly like, yeah opening up a Kang tab adding it to the <laughs> by the way I really love there's only one issue yeah right? <laughs> I know that book is good but like, see I can be caught up Jeff yes. I can read it now <laughs> that book is good by the way like the art's amazing and the story's fun but it's also just like is this just Rick and Morty but in the Marvel Universe and it's like <laughs> who's complaining <laughs> I didn't even see that that you had a go layers and, and, and really just peel away <laughs> no, I, all the literally I, I was just like this is great let me ex- describe it my wife's like so it's just rick and morty and i'm like yeah yeah and rick and morty is Shit. great too thank you yeah, i love no, i was like that's amazing way to go <laughs> all right so moving forward on our topics yes we don't <laughs> yeah, yeah please <laughs> mark ruffalo has spoiled that this week's episode is the marvel zombies episode. hooray aka mark ruffalo got the okay from disney to release this tra- <laughs> teaser trailer that's right I, I i don't believe mark ruffalo tom holland and anthony mackie leaks are real leaks no. like when tom holland did i just got the script we don't know the name of this movie yet it's like on There's there. no way he's that dumb. No, <laughs> no, nope. no. But Mark Ruffalo was kind of like a spoiler king for the MCU for a little while. So I like the idea that they were like, "Hey, Mark, you you're known for kind of being a spoiler person. You're in this episode. Spoil the trailer. Like that's yeah. that's a cute little like marketing move. And he's happy to do it because you know what was the last time you watched a Mark Ruffalo rom com? I loved Eternals, uh, Spotless Sunshine. Was he in that movie? Was. That's Jim Carrey. Yes. No, yeah, he was the other guy. Movie. Is he the other guy? <laughs> that was the first movie I saw with Mark Ruffalo. That that was accidentally Eternal the first Sunshine one. Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That was yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I forgot. I mean, I didn't even know he was in that He's movie. He's the other guy helping the girl. Oh. Or the, the, like doing the whole brain thing. He's, the, yeah. he's on that team. I'm thinking of whatever rom-com he was in like between being the Hulk where I was like, oh, look at you doing a movie. It might be Spotlight. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't Spotlight. That was a real movie. Um, it doesn't matter. The point is... 
Yeah, I don't remember, uh, yeah. Marvel Zombies. I have been on. Uh, yeah, uh, Jim, you want to take a break? Yeah, uh, but real quick. Yeah, the mar- the the, tra- the teaser trailer. It was awesome. I mean, if you guys haven't seen it yet, worth checking out. I think they did a great job of like pick, you know, starting where we're familiar, and then yeah. what if happens, right? right? And then it's they like they even showed us Infi- Infinity War Hulk, where he's like, "No, I don't want to come out." Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I almost thought like, did he not even say those lines over? It almost sounds like ripped from Endgame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. All right, well, yeah. moving on to our next topic here, uh, we got the first look at the Aquaman suit for Aquaman Two, the blue one. Yeah, <laughs> anybody remember the blue one? Because I only remember seeing the book. Like, there's this, there's this mini series of Aquaman from like 1985, and he has this stealth suit. He he's dressed like water. <laughs> I didn't even know an Aquaman two was in development. I was like, yeah, I've only heard about it, but like they dropped this picture of him, and I'm like, okay, so is this one of those things where it's a Photoshop job, or is that it? An almost action- looks like it could be right, right? But yeah, I, I guess it's him. My only complaint about this is we just got him in the orange and the green. <laughs> like we just the got suit, the yeah. real comic accurate suit. Seriously, in the next movie, we're gonna drop it. Like, well. <sighs> But it's been like five years, <laughs> so for them was, they're like, "What are you talking about?" It's been that forever. was always the move in, in the Batman movies back in the day. New costume, so yeah. they got the sonar costume now. Well, I mean, it's they like do it in the CW that, oh. shows. Every season yeah. is a new costume. You know what I mean? Every- that's what sells the toys, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. But I do. I mean, um, like with, with CW, at least they they're up. I feel like those changes are like we're just making it look better. Like we just try to make the costume look more. You would think that. You budget. would think that, but that's not I would it. Think that. No. <laughs> I, I, this is speaking from somebody who doesn't watch those. But also, yes. all of it makes sense because are you really just going to wear the same thing every day? Like, it makes sense. Like, they had different costumes. I don't know about it. you, Jim, but I wear the same boxers every day. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't get excited for it. They didn't show me anything that was like, oh, man, Aquaman 2 is going to be lit. It's like, okay, no. cool. Blue suit. Next. I, th- th- that's it. <laughs> I'm curious about Aquaman 2 because this will be the first one. Since 1985, that is, like, post the Snyder influence. Yeah. Mm. In 1985, while not a terrible movie, was not a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, the director is saying something. Or was it the director in that article saying, like, listen, we got the uh, the origin thing out of the way. We, we've got the uh, the groundwork put in. Now we could do something totally different, which. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I like, now- And I like the first one. I remember coming out feeling like, yo, this feels like the Jeff Johns um Aquaman book, yeah. right? With the whole underwater battles and all that. Totally. It was good. I liked it. I only oh, saw sorry, it once, 1984. Though, so. I, I had the wrong year for Wonder Woman. Oh, was it 84? Oh, oh, it? Ni- oh, Wonder Woman 84. Yes. Yeah, I thought you said Aquaman 84. I was like, I didn't catch that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sleeper hit. They put it out. You know, they just got Jason Momoa to come back, run around First for a few minutes. Of none, of the, none of those <laughs> 90s, like the first Captain America movie, none, none of those movies really count. No. <laughs> well, no, but Wonder Woman 1984 was made last year. Yeah, that, oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. He okay. didn't mean. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm thinking the year. That's the year. Yeah, I was born. yeah. I thought you were talking about the year too. I'm like, is he talking about like the flash? Yeah, but show? so that's funny that you say that because that makes me nervous when they say now we can do anything we want because <laughs> right. like Wonder Woman '84 was like was such a crazy great. departure from the it, first one. The first one was amazing, and the second one was like, I yeah. get what you're going for, but you you it fell so hard off a pedestal yeah. to get to this level. You and went from epic like, to 80s yeah. mall movie. Like, yeah. what like, are you doing? It doesn't, like, you know, there aren't a lot of great Wonder Woman runs, you know, but there are a lot of solid Wonder Woman stories. You know, like, you can count on one hand the amount of Wonder Woman library books that you could pick out. That you're like, <laughs> here's a Wonder Woman adaptation. Like, you know, no one's going to grab the William, uh, whatever the hell his name was, not the creator, but the guy who wrote <laughs> the run, doesn't matter, when Artemis took over. But, like, no one's going to do that. But yeah. you could do Hikatea. What the hell are you doing? Everyone's saying that was <laughs> Waterworld. In the game. Waterworld was a great <laughs> movie, man. I would love to see Wonder Woman I Waterworld. Lo- you kidding I me? love Waterworld. Waterworld's a great classic. All right. <laughs> Next up, we got Jonathan Hickman's last... <laughs> the Jonathan Hickman thing is like an iceberg of just stupidity at this point. Like... He's not, you, yeah. He's not leaving. He's not leaving, but he is. He keeps uh, not leaving. Yeah. Yeah. It's he's like, like I'm not leaving. Uh, Inferno's my Street. last thing. <laughs> but no, oh, now, now, now I'm doing a digital one too. Well, but, I was uh, into it until you said it was a digital thing. I was like, yeah. ah, that kind of was yeah. a downer. Right? And it's not even digital. It's only through Marvel Unlimited. 
Right. So I don't even have that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have that. I don't. I do. I think. <laughs> Probably. We know that Benny got comicsology. Ching. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make that dollar. You know. <laughs> yeah, right. Here you. Yeah, uh, so I, I was excited. I mean, Hickman, man, Hoxpox was great. Yep. X Men 20, the S- issue 20, the Nimrod. I want to know what's up with Nimrod. Like, give me the Nimrod cut finale already. Yes. So, the issue I have with this Jonathan Hickman thing is okay, so Substack got announced. A whole bunch of writers basically said, hey, I'm out. No, not really, yeah. though. I'll be back. <laughs> all except James Tynan, who was uh, like, no, I'm out. Fuck you all. <laughs> right. And I'm deactivating Twitter. Peace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone else did this whole, like, PR speak, half talk, where they're just sitting around like, oh, okay, I'm out, I'm out. But no, no, until my next Marvel what? thing. Until my next DC right. thing. Until uh, Substack goes tits up, yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, and I've been in a lot of, like, discussions and debates, a lot of people on the Discord about this one, and they're like, no, 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 they said that they're coming back, and they said they're doing other things. And so far, the only one that I've been definitively wrong about was Chip, but that yes. could have also been pre-written because it's an event. I mean, who knows when it was actually written? We know that certain right. comic books get turned into events later. But I'll yeah. give that one. It's, it's still coming out within the time frame of the Substack deal. Inferno was already pre-written in his Jonathan Hickman's last word. Then they announce, here's what has me interested in this. Yeah. They didn't announce a comic. No. They announced a new comic's experience yeah what does so that mean a webisode or something yeah. sounds like nonsense to me <laughs> it could be a comic could it be like an injustice thing where it's like a digital re- released is yeah, it like yeah. i have i have organized x-men go to my a marvel unlimited thing what is this yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's a Substack exclusive marvel book <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. it could be man right i don't know that's like, crazy. my entire argument on this whole Substack thing has been, from the beginning, all of the writers who signed to the Substack deal are going to be out for a year. They're all coming yeah. back. Like, even yeah. a, like they're just taking a break to go do their Substack thing, and they're all coming back. Exactly. Yeah, and so shit. far, every, <laughs> every writer who said, I'm doing Substack, and I'll be back later, yeah. is seemingly doing that. Mm-hmm. Chip is obviously coming back for his event. Yep. Hickman's coming back for an experience this reminds me of the, the x games in the 90s remember those <laughs> <laughs> snowboarding and all that right yeah. yeah skateboarding and stuff yeah it almost seemed like so are you telling me that if you go to substack you're exclusive to substack and you can't publish your image titles anymore? i don't like, why no, they, that's no, not no, case no. still you can absolutely do whatever you want no because the thing with the right. Substack deal is like you can make whatever you want it's just yeah but when it came out it seemed like well because some writers like donny cates yeah. never said they're leaving Donny right, Cates like right. I'm still doing all my stuff. Nothing. I think is Tiny and set the precedence with like his whole "I'm out" kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, because he's yeah, because his his was the most kind of headline making because he was leaving back. He was yeah. he was excited yeah. to leave, and he just like. got back. Well, him like, and Hickman hit the headlines ago, so. the most because yes. both because everyone knew Hickman was on X Men for like the foreseeable future, but now yes. he's like I'm out because I made so much stuff that the writers are doing a better job and I'm just gonna stop doing X Men, yeah. which sounds like the most bullshit reason to leave right. one of the largest things ever to me ever. But hey, that's what he's saying. It sounds like it's right. the opposite of that, <laughs> right? Right. Because then he's like, but I'll be back in Marvel with my next event, and it's like, when? Like, if you right. want to come at me and be like, look. I want out on X-Men. I made a great thing, and the other writers are doing a better job, so I'm going to leave. But I'm doing yeah. Avengers in three months. Okay, he's he's just rolling over. You know what I mean? That's like, bizarre. I, yeah. I, yeah. I would not have expected that. But yeah. I think we uh, I think we lost Twitch. Well, we, we might be back, though. Oh, okay. We're back? Yeah. Oh, we're so back. My, biggest, my biggest thing with this is, and maybe it's a comic. It might be a comic. I'm not denying that. Right. But if it's not a comic, why? if it is a comic, why didn't they just say, new X-Men book? Exclusive to Marvel point. Unlimited. Why isn't it on the timeline? Yeah, why isn't it on the timeline? What is the experience? I just it sounds <laughs> like is, is it like a new a new uh, Universal Studios section or something <laughs> I hope like not. what? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you're yeah. in Krakoa in Universal Studios. That's right. Look, oh, that's yes. It. There you go. Or Disneyland is going to open up a little Krakoa Island somewhere. <laughs> Actually, I'm saying Universal. What am I thinking? It's Disney owned hmm. properties. No, but Universal could do it because they have Superhero Island Adventure. That's they the, have that's the Hulk ride, right? Yeah, they got that. They got, they got the Spider-Man ride and the, the Fantastic Four cafeteria. And the, mm. yeah. I, they have a comic shop there too. They do. It's it's pretty. <laughs> the cool. comic shop is dope. The, the wood panel uh, things yeah. they have in there are dope. I actually dope. have something similar to that. Anyway. I I want to get 
stuff because you know one day <laughs> that's gonna close and all that stuff's gonna be up for grabs right? and it's like there's that big pink doom bot in the one of the out i'm like there's so many things i just want to grab oh and, and, you ben, know and, yeah. and and they sell side so sideshow statues they're about huge. three times the price yeah. though yeah. <laughs> you could no. buy it from yeah. i saw like a captain marvel it's pretty big but three thousand dollars yeah. is a lot <laughs> it's uh, way overpriced <laughs> so this this thing is just interesting though because i i don't know what to think about it because it I mean, we'll know in two days what it officially is. But yes. a new comics experience, <laughs> it does not say to me, Jonathan Hickman's writing more Marvel. It just says that this was a part of his idea. And apparently, according to this article, he pitched the entire X-Men line as a digital-only thing. Yeah. That's so that, yeah. Uh, who knows what this actually is? Because like I said, if, it's, if it was just Jonathan Hickman continuing a story, I don't know why they didn't just say, Jonathan Hickman's writing an X-Men story on Marvel on the Let let me let me let me let me speculate for a second because like if you you know Bill, Benny you brought up a really interesting point which is that Jonathan Hickman had originally planned on doing a digital exclusive X Men event but you can right. tell that like his X Men plans changed and morphed as he got new blood into the into the line and number one it was it was never going to go digital exclusive because no and number two like the creators he got are doing things the Mars plan they had like that was not Hickman's idea so he got a lot of new ideas he got a lot of yeah. new concepts for his like he he kind of like germinated what other people were doing with X-Men but they took it in places he could never imagine so for him he's like okay cool it's nothing like what I envisioned the X-Men line to be it could be that he's like I'm gonna do that again but with the digital thing like I planned so he's taking maybe he'll take another area that no one's doing anything with like maybe he'll grab magic or maybe he'll grab the inhumans or maybe he'll grab like Man. street level something well, and do I, his like digital exclusive like run that well, why would he care so much about it how it's released i don't understand I think that some of these folks find find the the publishing aspect so fascinating and i can imagine that they're like because if, if you look at the numbers and De benny and i did a whole episode about i think it was absolute comics where we just talk about like how digital sales versus physical and how physical is like dwarfing digital sales despite right. like all the benefits to digital and or despite all of the backlash from retailers about the decision to even go digital at all yeah. and mm. it could be that hickman has a couple of thoughts about why digital sales are so bad comparatively to physical and maybe he's like well i could teach a jeff bezos company how to sell digital books better or i could be mm. hired by marvel to do that for them because you'll notice it's through marvel limited so it could be that he's like i'm just fascinated with by the concept of selling digital books or changing the market just just because you know he's like right, well I, if he makes it exclusive then if this is the only place you can get it is it is it an ego test am right. i big enough yeah. to make these numbers look good because it's digital exclusive right right i mean did did him coming to x-men actually boost the sales outside of like producing 20 x-men books well it boosts the sales in terms of those books literally didn't exist before he showed up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know like I mean, 400 percent totally, of zero <laughs> i mean you got to give him credit he did totally set a brand new foundation and he, he gave x-men and mutants like years of you know places they can go absolutely i don't was anybody talking about X Men the prior run to this? The no, well, X Men Black. There was a small group of us. not doing it, but yeah, yeah there was a small yeah. group of us. I'm looking back at Ju December 2020. Okay, because I know people talk about X Men. The main X Men book was back up in the top ten. Okay, nothing else is. <laughs> no, no, but it does sell, and that's the thing is it it, yeah. it it sells enough. You know, like X Factor didn't sell; it got canceled. You know. Fallen Angels Did it? didn't well, sell. It got canceled. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, but Fallen Angels was terrible. X Force is at thir uh, was at thirty six back in December. That's enough to sell. That's that's a, that's that's X Daredevil. X Factor numbers. was fifty four. Yeah, that's, that's better than Daredevil. Yeah, no, that's a good number. Fifty four. Yeah. No, Daredevil beat it. Daredevil's at twenty five. Yeah, no, like those books, like twenty five and up. That's a that's a book you'll never cancel because of those are the numbers now. But. Uh, you know what's down here though that did get canceled? The U.S. Agent. Oh yeah, uh, Force Genie Works. Hex, uh, the U.S. Special. Agent was super weird, and he was nothing like how they portrayed him in the in the nope. uh, Disney Plus show. They didn't have any and... idea what he was going to be like at the Disney Plus show. You could yeah. tell they were like, oh, yeah. "We just got to put out a John Walker book." Right. Now I see why they canceled Red Hood. Yeah. The final issue was at one thirty nine. Oof, that fell hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Red I... Sonya beat it out that month. Damn. <laughs> when Red Sonya's being Red Hood. Yeah, I like Red Sonya. I do. 
Yeah. But it shouldn't be beating out Red Hood. <laughs> I mean, just, just from a marketing standpoint alone. Yeah. Right. But yeah, no. Hey, I, shout I out to Dynamite, like... though, man. Hey, congrats. <laughs> <laughs> congrats. congrats. You crushed Red Hood. Way to go. <laughs> I mean, but seriously. I can totally see them being like. I mean, I, I like Red Sonia. Being... It's just Conan with boobs. Like, I love, I read Red Sonia. <laughs> I, I could see Hickman being like, well, if I sell this much through Substack with Marvel behind me, I could sell yep. this much. And just, yeah, it's an ego boost. And and I'm sure, you know, if you're the progenitor of this line, maybe you have some kind of like inside track financial incentive. Maybe you get a percentage. I mean, like, I don't know how that works. I doubt they that Marvel would ever give up a percentage of anything. But I could see Never. that there being some kind of incentive to right. sell a digital exclusive anything experience. I mean, what right? Does that oh, mean? It's, that's, that's, that's what I want. Why is it called experience? Why is it not just new comics from Hickman on the digital line? So it we'll, could, we'll find maybe, out in two days what it is. Yeah, why. I don't. I don't have the, a, unlimited. Does it have like audio in there too? Like maybe there's like it's like kind of motion. Up. Do you know, they still do the AR stuff where you could put your phone on the Right? Comic? I don't That's think they I'm going to yeah. it right now to see because I, I, I know I have an account for the company. That was cool for like one issue. And yeah, was like, <laughs> that was neat in that one book they did and it was like, oh. But they kept doing it. And you're like, so many print runs are just like, what is this little thing in the corner? Do oh, they don't still even put the, the stickers in the back where you can get your free code, or is that done too? Oh, those are that's long over, uh, is which it? is really too bad because that was a really good idea and it really pissed people off when they dropped it. Um, but yeah, no, they dropped that, which is really that's too funny. bad. Oh, you yeah. get the digital copy for free is what that yeah, was. Yeah, that was yeah. what they were yeah, doing to try to push digital. Yeah. Yeah, that which, was the thing about digital. Like you're paying the same, not to get into a whole combo about this, but sure. you're paying the same price, but you don't, this whole will hold some type of value. It might go up in value. Yeah. You know what I mean? But Probably digital, not, but I agree with you on that. I actually, <laughs> as much it, as I, as much as I enjoy my digital collection, I still prefer the physical over that no matter what, because oh, you're right. Yeah. Most of them are going to go down in value. But you never know, and it's also nice to just have that like box and that smell and the. Yeah. Oh, and, 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 and fun thought: every image one that I read digitally is the one that becomes a huge key issue that I don't own the physical copy That's of. That's the thing, so. right? Like I, I, I was, I was a loyal, hardcore Daredevil reader, and I didn't have the physical of Elektra's first Daredevil yeah. appearance, twenty-five or yeah. something. I think and, it was, yeah, and because it, you know, because I was just reading the book, and I went to the comic shop, and it's like, oh, that sold out this morning when all yeah. the speculators showed up, and I'm like, damn, like if this, I had just this is still the problem. Just had it. This is still the problem with Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, new releases today. Here is your board number five. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did, wasn't that Heroes like nine issues? Born? <laughs> yeah. That should be uh, Spider Man that's... 67, Non South Spider Man wow. 3, Infinite Destinies three. number one. That just ended, by the way. Yeah. Uh, mm. Immortal Hulk 47. No wonder Benny's getting caught up on these old ass <laughs> naughty <Yeah. ones>. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Here's your board number five, though. It's not even the finale. Wasn't that no. a six issue thing? A six? No, it was eight, eight, and then Heroes Return was the ninth issue or something like that. War of the Bounty Hunters. I can finally read it. <laughs> oh. No, it's not over. <laughs> you can start reading it through Marvel Unlimited. Way to go. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, let's move on to our last topic here because yes. everything everything in this section of the video is going to be useless in two days. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. We've got to get this out. Yeah. Um, all right, last thing we're going to talk about is Warner Brothers has released the first footage of the new Matrix Resurrections, bringing back oh, yeah. the website for the film franchise, but with a twist. When you go to the website, whatisthematrix.com, you can pick blue or red pill, and depending on which pill and time of day it is, you will get a different combination of possible teaser videos from footage of the film and narration from the talent involved. That's cool. Yeah. I So I did it. And what time it says on your phone, it'll say that in the thing. It'll be like, you think it's 4.30 right now, but is it? So <laughs> oh, like, that's it the variation? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because it, it'll say it and it'll show it. Listen, I love The Matrix. I would think I was in high school when the first one came out. It blew my mind. The trailer that they do show, it's like, with, with the upgraded technology, because that was like the pinnacle of movie graphics. Yeah. I mean, how, how much did people rip off the spinning circular Ugh. kick thing? It was disgusting by yeah. the end of it. Mm -hmm. but, uh, man, or the seeing, bullet, like lean back. With right, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seeing them, seeing them, like you get quick flashes of like that kind of stuff in this version. It looks so much better. It looks so good. I can't wait to, to see it. I'm hyped. I, 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 yeah. I hope it's going to be good because the Matrix... If you watch all of it, so Matrix 1, 2, and 3, Animatrix, Enter the Matrix, the video game, if you did their whole media thing, 
there's a full story here. It does resolve. Like, we didn't need more. Yeah. Right. So this shows that Neo is older. This shows new characters. So they're obviously continuing it. It's not a relaunch. So I'm right. curious what they're going to do with the plot. Other than do the obvious, the machines didn't come through. What? <laughs> well, I think, but see, I think you kind of foreshadowed in your in your explanation. Animatrix, Enter the Matrix video game on PS1. Not everybody <laughs> played and saw those things. Yeah, you know what I'm true. saying? So, you know, they you know they could i don't know if they're gonna tell the same story but they can go somewhere else from the original trilogy to here did you know that I there was a matrix, a matrix mmorpg where they continued no. the story of who got neo's body yeah i remember that being a thing i never i never played it i never played it I, either but i read the plot <laughs> yeah i did play funny enough enter the matrix on ps1 and it was dope when it came out oh it's so cool <laughs> wasn't it because the way it intertwined yeah. into the movie it was so right great. the same scenes with the columns and you yeah. can do the, the weird <laughs> movement stuff nice I but I, I mean do we have much more to say on that is anyone super uh, excited about matrix I'm, I'm really disappointed Lawrence fishburne isn't in it i'm hoping that, that it's sucks. that it's fake that like he actually is in it but uh I heard that he was. He's doing something. He's doing something recently. I saw his name pop up somewhere in our world. Oh. Lawrence Fishburne's doing something. So why the hell is he not doing the Matrix? Is that's, the question, right? That's what I'm thinking. Is like, I'm oh, it was PS2. Now. My bad. Not PS1. My bad. Uh, I, it's old. That's all that matters at this point. <laughs> yeah, it, we're on five now. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm looking now. I want to see what he's doing before we close out today's episode. Someone said he's writing Moon Girl. Is that true? Apparently, he's that? working on the the, the the Moon Girl TV show. What is Moon Girl? It's Lunella, the, it's on whatever our, the hell her name is. She's a uh, oh, dinosaur. We're oh, okay, 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 yeah. She's the smartest person on the planet or something like that? Right. He is writing that. I knew he was doing something. Yeah, he's producing it. Okay. Right. Cool. All right. Shout well, guys, that is today's <laughs> episode of Absolute Comics. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit longer episode than normal. But, hey, we had a lot of fun. Jem, you're a great guy to have in the show. Why don't you tell them where they can find you? One last plug out here. Yeah, thank you, man. You can find me on YouTube, Gem Mint Collectibles, uh, Statue Unboxings, Omnibus Halls, Weekly Comic Book Reviews, Sunday Live Streams, Big Giveaways. Come check it out. He is a daily uploader still. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Every day at 11 a.m. Eastern. See, he's got a doubt. He's more on point than I am. I forgot to watch something today. <laughs> <laughs> I even have a video. And I didn't even I watch it. I want that liberation, that, that feeling where you just don't even care. And it's just yeah. New rolled happens. around and I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't watch the video. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I've been scheduling them the night before because I hate oversleeping. And anyway. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So anyway, guys, thank you so much. As usual, I'm Benny from Comic Story, and that is Sal from Comic Pop. And don't forget to check out our sponsor. I forgot to mention it at the front of this video, G Fuel. Use the code COMICS at checkout. They have a new free guy flavor. Forgot to mention that to you, Sal. You too oh, it? can feel like Ryan Reynolds. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next time right here at Absolute Comics. <laughs>